Muja Baruka. Muja is in Norway. Muja, this is something. This is quite something. Muja is in Norway. It's at the International Literary uh, Festival. Presenting at the festival, one of a handful of international literary uh, geniuses who are visiting and attending this conference in Norway, presenting on behalf of Jamaica, on behalf of the diaspora, in behalf of the Caribbean motor. Congratulations on that, as usual, representing Jamaica in a way that only you can do. So Mutabuka is this chaotic mess that's going on with this new tra- road traffic act there's only one thing to do those who have said that there needed to be a, a public education they are right just let us say that they are right but i'll say much more about that throughout the program and those who are calling for for this to for a pause on this for a while until public education they are also right and those who have said that listen we need a new uh, kind of a, 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 a paradigm regarding how we use the roads. They are also right. So the government's move to put in new rules and regulations regarding the, the, how we use the roads in Jamaica, they're right on that. So if everybody right on something, then we must can meet in the middle. Because what's happening on the Jamaican roads is serious, it's nasty, dirty, and we needed some kind of intervention, which is what the government has done. But have they done a sloppy job? It can't do so. We're going to talk more about that later on. It can't do so. <laughs> so let me speak to the government of Jamaica. Mr. Andrew Holness, there is something happening here that you're going to have to stop and pay some attention to. Take the blows with this and move. The idea of putting in a new road traffic act regulations, this is a good idea. This is needed because Jamaica is a wild, wild west when it comes to the roads, right? So there is that. Number two, you should have had some public education campaign before you do this in the same way you had a public education campaign for the COVID vaccine and the HPV vaccine. So you haven't done that. So you put the cart before the horse. So pull it back and do the public education campaign. You have no choice. I am a very intelligent woman. So, co- college answer yes there. I'm going to look on him for asking if it's good. Don't be intelligent. Me right, me bright. And, and, and I'm a bright girl. And because I'm so bright, I myself, <laughs> I'm looking at this thing and I'm saying to myself, if I don't know, if I'm driving here and I'm driving into the, into a, in, literally into a tunnel, if I don't know, you know, I mean, then no, no for we don't know. I mean, also me the brightest in the park, but me, me kind of brightish. So, um... If I'm not grasping it, not for we not grasp it, I don't even know where to find it. So much less for grasp it. So something is very, 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 very wrong with how it is being done. So the public education campaign is a must. Andrew Holness and everybody else involved in this, I say to you, put a break on this and top the world by talking in a parliament and stop wasting people's time. Withdraw the thing, do the public education campaign and come again. What you're doing is right. How you're doing it is wrong all right i don't think a lot of your people read it either so that's another thing not for them now read it and coming out to defend what you have done don't make no sense you say that you have um support from middle jamaica and the silent majority of course a lot of us um support it we support it but not the way it is being done all right now we're not gonna call no names yeah because uh, yes because we, we don't have the proof in our hands and we will not have it yes and we the, don't want to investigate as well because you know what i had to do with ssl and um all the corruption and 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 the prime minister's account that was closed and so on at ssl i had to be i had to go back to my, my journalism law book <laughs> and i study i studying defamation and libel and slander because in a serious way they're they're it, they're swimming at the top now like oil yes and i words. don't i don't want to be caught up in it you see so mm-hmm. i want to ensure that we don't call nobody name when we're supposed to call well, but we know so the prime minister closed my account yes what we don't know is why the prime minister closed my account mm, and what, what what did um, the Prime Minister know? What initiated the action? Yes, what did the Prime Minister know and when did he know it? Mm-hmm. That has not been answered. But the Minister of Finance is very close to the Prime Minister. Him could ask him that. Who says he has not? Okay, so will the Minister of Finance please tell us what the Prime Minister said if you, if you, if you asked him that? But they right. might not be as 
close as as we think they are to ask that well, question, even if they're not like on a body body kind of thing. But then I've asked um, whether it is body body or other body. <laughs> you can't just tell me. <laughs> you should have known. You have sent me where we come from. <laughs> we go to the phone lines to speak with my very special guest, attorney at law and a former FBI agent, Wilford Rattigan. Mr. Wilford Rattigan, good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much for taking the time, making the time to join us inside of the uh, Step in Razor this afternoon. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Good afternoon to you, your listening audience, and it's my extreme pleasure to be here. All right. I, 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 I owe you an apology. Usually, we, um, it's our practice, SOP, to, to promo our interviews, our listeners know who's coming on. But you are such a high-profile guest that we couldn't take any chances <laughs> with you. <laughs> we, didn't wa- <laughs> we didn't want any form of sabotage. We needed to ensure okay. that you came into the space and that everything would have been clear for you. It's too late for them now to take it off flow. No, I don't say flow doing it, you know, but normally, you know, there's a whole lot of things that happen. So here we are. Thank you so much, Mr. Rattigan. Now, I said before you're an attorney at law, but also that you're a former FBI agent. I've been following you for a long time. I've seen you in, in many spaces. I've heard you talked about the fact that Jamaica need to tap into the diaspora for the knowledge um, in the diaspora regarding the management and, 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 and overseeing of our, of our um, of police and, 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 and so on. So I've seen some of those um, conferences that you have addressed and I've also seen you on the interviews on YouTube and so on. But let me start with former FBI agent. What does that mean? Former FBI agent. Actually, mm-hmm. it's a retired FBI agent. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I uh, I signed up in was it nineteen eighty seven, and I retired in two thousand and seventeen. A few months short of thirty years. Wow, that's a, um, that's a whole lot of time. What did you do? Can tell me as as best as you can because I know you won't be able to say everything. Uh, What's I've, your done, I've done just about I've done just about everything except working in the technical field, like mm-hmm. you know, people the ones who do installation. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, have technical devices. I, I didn't do that, mm-hmm. um, but other than that, I've done everything. I've worked undercover. I've worked. Uh, I've worked uh, counterintelligence, catching spies. Mm-hmm. I've worked counterterrorism. Mm-hmm. I've worked uh, in the criminal division. Mm-hmm. Um, I've worked as a legal advisor, mm-hmm. um, and then I've worked overseas as well. I, I was in charge of the office in Saudi Arabia um, mm-hmm. back in from 2000 to 2003, and I was in charge of the office in Pretoria, South Africa, yeah. where we covered 16 countries, and that was from 2010 to 2013. And then I've traveled all over. Of course, I've traveled yes. Traveled to. Uh, um, Thailand, Hungary, Canada, uh, Germany. Um, of course, in the uh, when I was in Saudi Arabia, we covered the entire Arabian Peninsula. But, mm-hmm. So I was responsible. My territorial responsibility was over seven countries, mm-hmm. and of course, I traveled to all of them. Yeah. And um, uh, where else? No, first, so, I, 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 oh, I've traveled to uh, Hong Kong. Uh, mm-hmm. um, so that you, you, uh, you're 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 your portfolio is wide and not just wide, but also deep in terms of your experiences and, and what you would have gained. And even, um, I suppose, uh, you talk about counter uh, intelligence and so on. We want to dig into what you know to help us to understand um, what we're facing here in Jamaica when it comes to our, uh, our situation with re- crime and violence, but also to... Uh, talk a bit about the corruption and how we see that being handled. And I know you also have some views about what's happening in our financial sector. But let me start with uh, Jamaica's crime problem. Jamaica is now the... Well, it, it vacillates, doesn't it, from the most murderous country in in the region to the second most murderous country, and it is also it has the dubious um, uh, 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 distinction of being one of the most murderous countries in the entire world, including those countries that are having civil wars. 
what do you think from your own experience, wide experience, are some of the main reasons for this? Because we hear that it's gang violence. Is that it? Well, yes. I mean, but that's an easy one, though. Mm-hmm. Um, to point and say, well, there are gangs involved. Of course, there are gangs involved. But there is a big C. People, people, people don't want to talk about it that much. And when they do talk about it, they talk about it on the low level. Mm-hmm. They talk about corruption as far as a policeman who's collecting money for somebody who committed a, a traffic infraction. Mm-hmm. And as I say, it's corruption. But corruption, it goes way, 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 way deeper and higher than that. Um, I mean, for example, I'll give you an example. For example, mm-hmm. You have you have uh, parliamentarians. They're supposed to declare their assets, right? And some of them have declared their assets, and the assets haven't been verified by the Integrity Commission. Mm-hmm. Some of them just they, they haven't, and it, it's just a disdain for the law. And I, I, the reason why that sticks out so much for me is because as an FBI agent, I was supposed to submit two financial disclosures every year, mm-hmm. and it's not. It's not, it, and there was no discretion. Like if I felt like doing that, it, it mm-hmm. was mandatory, and mm-hmm. you you dare not be late mm-hmm. because then that that's just added scrutiny. Mm-hmm. So, and one of them was uh, a few pages, very basic. The mm-hmm. other one, it took months uh, to complete. And in fact, the FBI would they would warn you. They'd say they'd give you a reminder, like mm-hmm. maybe two three months out, saying, "Hey, this thing is coming up. Don't mm-hmm. forget." Why is it and so it important? Was, why is it so important? Because I hear you saying, and the big C you're referring to is corruption, right? You're saying that yes. we, 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 we cannot underplay corruption in Jamaica's crime problem. And then you're pointing to that declaration of assets by politicians and how yes. if that is not done, what, what, what are the, what are the, 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 the what, what can you, the inferences can you draw from this? Why is it so important to declare your assets? And when you don't, what can we draw from that? Well, you know, it's important to declare it because, first of all, you're operating in the sunshine, right? Mm-hmm. You're transparent, you're open, and people are supposed to know that their politicians, their elected representatives are above and beyond reproach. So if you're making $100 a year, and then all of a sudden, you see that you have a bank account with a million dollars mm-hmm. and homes and all the trappings of wealth. Then the question, the, 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 those things beg the question, where did you get these things from? Mm-hmm. Right? And then so people start looking and say, oh, did he win the lottery? Mm-hmm. Did he inherit this? Mm-hmm. How about his family members? Did they give this to him? And so on and so forth. And if you cannot explain mm-hmm. your, your newfound wealth, then... You know, you, you, the, the, the government, and mm-hmm. it's weird because you're asking the government to investigate the government, mm-hmm. right? But you, you would have to explain that, otherwise you would lose it. And, and so and that's why I, I compare and contrast with my time in the FBI, where if you couldn't explain your newfound wealth, mm-hmm. they would be held to pay. But we have a lot of that. that. We have a lot of, and when you say hell to play, like what? What, 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 what? what would happen in the FBI if you can't explain your newfound wealth? Some serious scrutiny. First of all, they, 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 you scrutiny, then you probably lose your clearance. And without your clearance, you really can't function. Mm-hmm. Because every FBI agent has a top secret clearance. And so what would happen is that they'd have to take your clearance away while they're investigating you, and they'd have to put you someplace else. Because the feeling is that, look, this person's working with very, very, uh, sensitive information. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. if he cannot explain his wealth, then we just have to assume that it's coming from a bad place. And mm-hmm. if it's coming from a bad place, then it means that he's probably not doing something good. Right. From a bad place. And of course, there would be undue right. influence um, on that person. Um, uh, and the, So the control of, of, of the decisions that person would be making could be compromised um, if, 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 if you... Exactly. Could. The uh, crime and corruption in Jamaica, and the question we're asking, how do we begin to address this problem uh, on the island? Now, you're telling us, thanks for staying with us, uh, Mr. Rattigan, you're telling us the, um, w- that one of the main factors for the level of crime and violence we're seeing on the island, uh, in spite of what we're hearing, you're saying gang is a part of it, but definitely we are downplaying Corruption, and you're pointing to corruption at every level, not just a police officer collecting on the roadside, but also the fact that politicians are 
to be held to a particular standard and so that when they do not say submit um, their uh, declare their 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 assets then immediately red flags go up we have that situation in Jamaica right now mr. Ratigan at the highest level true true and and uh, it should as you said it should not be done to it another factor is that we don't have a crime plan right and mm-hmm. and people keep asking for a crime plan and I keep preaching telling them that don't expect a crime plan because the Jamaican government has moved past that they're now looking at something called a national security plan the Prime Minister himself told me this yes what's and the difference I even asked the minister I even asked um, uh, a former minister of national security one thing about a crime plan and he referred me to the national security plan. Now, my 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 uh, opinion on that is this: when you do a crime plan, a crime plan is going to be annual, right? And when you do a crime plan, you're going to say for the next twelve months, here is what we intend to achieve. You're going to have to put benchmarks. Mm-hmm. Now, that's politically dangerous because if you put that, you're going to cut murders by twenty percent, and a murder go up. That's going to be a talking point for the opposition. Mm-hmm, right? mm-hmm. So, so I, I, they don't do that because a crime plan has to be measurable. It has to be attainable. Yes. It has to be reasonable. Right? Mm-hmm. And you have to publicize it. And, uh, and they don't do any of this because mm-hmm. they know that it's just fraught with a political peril. Mm-hmm. So they don't do that. But what they do, they come up with something of the call the National Security Plan, which in and of itself is a noble idea because it seeks to protect the entire country, not just from crime. Mm-hmm. You know, but from counterintelligence and other things. Yes. Now, here's the problem. First of all, very few benchmarks, very few uh, deadlines. Mm-hmm. They tried to do it with the, um, they did it with, uh, in 20, I was it, 20, 20, 2020, I think, they had, uh, um, we had an agreement between private sector, the, the opposition. Oh, yes, the yes, 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 that private sector, so public so partnership and situation. Mm-hmm. Most of, they haven't met most of them. Yes. But think about this for a second. Think about this. When the government tells you that, look, we have a hundred and approximately 140 illegal points of entry, that tells you they cannot control their borders. That tells you that guns can come in at, at any, any point, any port. Drugs and, and of when, course, and of course, drugs. Indeed. Indeed, and we know Jamaica is a transshipment point for drugs, and we're seeing it play out before our very eyes. When you have when you have uh, the drugs for gun trade and the drugs uh, uh, um, drugs for gun and drugs for food trade with Haiti, mm-hmm. uh, and you can't stop that. When you have when you have when you get up and you say, okay, we're going to put police and soldiers higher up because we're sending them to Haiti. I, I mean, you said, you said, what are these people thinking? There's a group called Caricom, mm-hmm. right? That that is supposed to serve the entire Caribbean, right? Mm-hmm. That is member states. Yes. I mean, Jamaica doesn't have enough policemen to police Jamaica, and they've said it. They said mm-hmm. they need about 15,000, 15,000, and mm-hmm. they have about 12,000. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to tell these, and, and then you're sending them to a place where they don't understand the culture because it's a, comp- it's a different culture. Don't speak the language. They don't understand the language. They don't understand the terrain. And a lot of these guys that they're going to fight, these gangsters, they are former military people. Mm-hmm. They're trained. And we're going to send Jamaicans over there to contend with these people, mm-hmm. and you don't have the backing of CARICOM. But 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 I mean, IG, IG, IG is also seem to be a scapegoat to me because if we if we argue and 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 tell me if I'm wrong on on this because if we're going to do some critical thinking and some deep thinking if we argue that Jamaica is a transshipment point for hard drugs like we have a billion dollar fine in Kingston a billion dollars um fined it at Ian Fleming Airport then of course. Um, IG is, is, is also a transshipment port and is being used by others. Uh, and, and so that the real players are somewhere else, whether it's Latin America or continental um, uh, America or however you're going to look at it. But, but it seems to me as if there is a short-sightedness when we, when we focus on, on, on IT, um, right or wrong. Well, you're right, but let me just add something else to what mm-hmm. you just said. Short-sightedness, mm-hmm. yes. yes. But also deflection. Because if you look, every time there's a crisis, the 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 government comes up with something else. For example, when they when they when they uh, at uh, Ian Fleming Airport when mm-hmm. they had that drug find, mm-hmm. and I don't call it drug bust because they said they found it. Right? Yes, yes. If you if, if you go back and you and you uh, and you recall, a few days later, what happened? The prime minister went to Parliament and said, "I'm going to bulldoze homes in Clifton because they're 
they're harboring criminals and criminal activity. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, people forgot about it. <laughs> people forgot about what happened. Apart from, apart from, apart from us here at RFM. Yes, because we, we read we, we read through that at Irie, and, and so we we kept the focus yes. on, on Ian Fleming. And, so, and, and but, it, yes, it, mm-hmm. yes, and the thing about it is that it's predictable. We see it all the time. Yeah, I mean, now with SSL scandal, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, no, no, no we're going to hate it. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and then the focus is, but you know what? For the first time in the history of Jamaica, I think you have so many people now with the ability to convey the message to the masses in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Before, you know, you had the J, uh, uh, JBC, and, mm-hmm. the, and, and those were controlled. Mm-hmm. Now you have the internet, yes. and they cannot control that. Yes. So now more people are becoming more aware of mm-hmm. what's going on, and I'm so happy that the people got up and show up mm-hmm. and complain about this, uh, this Charlie Strange thing, and see what happened? The mm-hmm. government took a turn. Now, if you remember, just last week, during the retreat, the Prime Minister came out, he, re- he retreated from the retreat to come out and, and make a statement that, you know, this is the law and people have been clamoring for it and we're going to enforce it and blah, blah, blah. A few days later, what happened? Yeah, to backtrack mm-hmm. because people said, hell no, we're not going to put up with this. Mm-hmm. And that's what we need in Jamaica. We need activists. We need activism. Mm-hmm. We need people to feel that they have a stake in the future and uh, 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 of the country is, is, is and the it, outcome of, of certain policies. Is that and a nuance? Does that have to be a nuanced conversation, though? Um, cons- because I do agree, and I'm one of those persons who have said, listen, pull this back, go back to the drawing board, do your, and you don't have to go all the way to the drawing board, do your public education campaign and um, uh, look again at what you have in terms of the Road Traffic Act and, and, and when you roll it out, roll it out with people understanding and, and you're getting the buy-in because this is proper management at the end of the day. Um, but, but that, so, so that we have to put that in, in context, don't we? It, 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 be, yeah. so, so, so we have people um, demonstrating, we have people who are, who are talking against this. Uh, but, um, but but don't we have to balance the situation? Yeah, everything, yeah, you, you know, moderation is the key, right? You just can't go to the extreme. But at yeah. the same time, the government is going to the extreme. Let me give you one quick example of what I'm talking about when I talk about corruption. Um, the IMF, IDB, and the World Bank loaned, they didn't grant, it was not grant, it was a loan to Jamaica of approximately 750 million U.S. dollars for COVID purposes. And that money was, was loaned to, to, to two communities. Yes. Only. Yes. Vulnerable community, poor people we are talking about. Mm-hmm. And business, mm-hmm. right, to keep the country afloat. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, the government came up with this scheme whereby, you know, you have to have, uh, you have to have access to the internet, you have to have an account, you have to have this, you have to have that. No, a lot of people in the rural area, they don't, people desperately need that those funds, they don't have the access to that to access it and get the funds. So the question is, where did that money go? Now, Two, two things from that. One is, those same people who were identified to get this money and didn't get it, they're going to have to help to pay back that loan. So think about that. Yes. Money comes to you. You don't get it, but you have to turn on and pay back the money. Mm. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? No sense so at all. No sense. Make, no, it makes absolutely no sense. Can the you, second point is it. Yeah, so let us have that second point. Um, you were making as we look at Jamaica's crime problems and what are some of the, the factors impacting that? Okay. Um, and it's a pleasure being here. Um, yes. The time is not a, you know, it's not a problem for me. Okay, good. Um, the, 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 the second point is that uh, in conjunction with the first point where uh, monies were loaned to Jamaica for COVID. Yes. Second point, which is connected to that, is that the Auditor General did a survey of the Ministry of Health and Wellness and they came up with some astounding finds. They found out that approximately 400 million, 400 million U.S. dollars unaccounted for. They really couldn't trace it. Mm-hmm. There were irregularities with contracts. Mm-hmm. And uh, things were purchased using COVID funds for non-COVID reasons. Mm-hmm. And so people, you know, people don't follow these stories and say to them, because they're thinking, well, it doesn't really affect them. Well, yes, it does. It yes. does. Especially when the government now has to pay back those loans and poor people, particularly poor people, will have to come up and and, uh, and ante up and, and help to, to, to make those loan payments. Mm-hmm. And they didn't get any other money, you know? Yes. That's the sad part about it. And it, it, it I mean, I'm 
really, really ticked off about that. Yes, yeah, so am I. The, the, the narco problem, let us go there, because I know that okay. I, I flippantly say um, from time to time that we are becoming a narco state because we're seeing Jamaica resembling in the types of crimes and violence, in the way that politics seem to be involved in so much corruption and, and, and so much crime, um, that, that we're seeing it resembling, you know, Sinaloa, Sinaloa and, and, and places in Mexico and, and so on. So, so, so there is this question of... Um, of of the of that the narco problem. Can you talk to us about that? And from your own experience, how do you uh, how, how do you explain Jamaica's problem with drugs? Well, Jamaica has the unenviable uh, position of of being geographically mm-hmm. uh, ideal for transshipment of of, of, of drugs yeah. from Central and South America to. Uh, to, to the United States, to North America, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, having realized that, you'd think that that they would take necessary steps to prevent that from being the case. They would do that so that people would be dissuaded from doing that. Mm-hmm. But my, I would make the argument that what we see now with the fine, that's just the way to think. This has been going on for a long, long, long time because we have very porous borders. Mm-hmm. We have corrupt officials. We have people who look the other way. Right, mm-hmm. and we are we are geographically uh, uh, perfect uh, mm-hmm. in in terms of just having things just move on. Mm-hmm. So the idea that Jamaica is a transshipment point is nothing new. Mm-hmm. What is troubling is that not much has been done, despite the fact that this has been done for quite a long time. Look, they mm-hmm. not at one point. I'm, I'm I'm not sure the person is still there. Still a person at Southcom, right? Mm-hmm. Southern Command, the military post in, in Florida. Mm-hmm. And that person was supposed to be there and looking at the, you know, at, would have access to the satellites and all that stuff mm-hmm. to see the boats and the planes and the traffic mm-hmm. going in and around Jamaica. Now, a, a year ago, a little over a year ago, a plane crash landed off a rocky point, I think, off the coast of Canada. Yes. Now, keep in mind that we have military people who are supposed to be monitoring the airspace. We have civilian authorities monitoring the airspace. We also have this man or this person, uh, in, in this woman uh, in, in South Kong monitoring the airspace. Now, this plane crash landed. Crash landed. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows what happened to contents, the passengers, the pilot, and uh, the black box. Mm-hmm. Now, when a black box is missing from a plane, that proves positive that it's used for nefarious purposes because they don't want to be tracked. Mm-hmm. And it's not something that you just, you just go to the back of the plane and you pull off. Well, it's something that requires some effort. So if, if you were to pay, speculate, if, if you were to speculate on this, because you, 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 you referred um, Southcom, and, and I know we have the Caribbean Basin Security Initiative, etc. So, so if you were to speculate, and it seems to me as if you, you have that, what, what it is that you are, you're contemplating? In terms of what? In terms of what would have happened. Why is it that we have no information? What happened to the black box? What, what, oh, I mean, I yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, my sources, I don't even have to speculate. And my sources in that region have told me that this plane was expected. It was expected. It, it was, it was, it was, um, it was uh, licensed in Mexico. And I'm being told that it was supposed to be the very last flight and that it crash landed off the coast. And it had, it had cargo and it had people. And so the speculation is that it contained drugs and it contained bad people. And what happened is that the drug, I'm being told, this is what I'm being told, mm-hmm. that the drugs came off the plane, the transport in a vehicle, and the, the passengers were transported in a vehicle. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and so I'm not surprised that, I, I, I'm, I'm, even, I'm even thinking that the drugs that, that they found in the Ian Fleming Airport, that mm-hmm. it may have been part of that shipment. Wow. But here's the critical thing. The, the, the Minister of National Security came out about a week, two weeks after the incident and said, the people aboard the aircraft have left the country. Now, how does he know that? Mm-hmm. And why didn't he stop them? What, 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 what mechanism did he employ to ensure that these people who are illegally in Jamaica, that they were caught and dealt with appropriately. What measures? Mm-hmm. None. Similarly, 
it's just like the gentleman who, uh, who allegedly molested these young girls, mm-hmm. right? And it's been going on for a while. Mm-hmm. What measures did they implement to ensure that this man didn't leave the island? Mm-hmm. None. Mm-hmm. None. None. So, what measures, did they ensure, what, what, measures did they, what measures did they implement to ensure that he was arrested? And they could have. They could have, under the law, they could have. None. We're hearing so now. My argument, yes, go ahead. So go I'm ahead. My argument is that. So my argument is that we don't have leaders in Jamaica. We don't have leaders. What we have, we have poor managers. Mm-hmm. And what they one, one, and what they do as a manager, they blame somebody else. And I can point to several examples. I can point to Minister Favor Williams, who's a very, very poor example. Uh, of, a, of a minister and as a leader over our children's future and, our, and their education. Mm-hmm. I can point to Minister Minister Tushton, who blamed for the for the, the, uh, the poor conditions of the hospital. He blamed visitors. He mm-hmm. blamed hospital administrators. He blamed regional. He blamed the whole world except himself. Mm-hmm. I can point to Minister Chang, national security. It, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Look. Yes. <laughs> the, we have examples out of this world and 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 ex- ongoing examples because we are where we are and we're not getting any better. This is a thing. So in the in the last 5 minutes that we have how do we then uh, begin because we're going to have to call you back um to to further look at the solutions but how do we begin to address all of these issues that we have raised here today? How do we begin to even address this? I, 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 a very good question um, because it's not all about that. One of the things I've said is that people need to be educated. A lot of our people they don't know what's going on, and whatever they hear, you know, not, whatever they come to understand is through hearsay, and, a mis- and what they have is a misunderstanding. Mm-hmm. So you have people like me and others who are educating our people, saying, "Look, this is what's going on. So here's what you need to do. You can file under the Access to Information." Uh, statute to get information. You can talk to your your your, your MP, uh, and also when you talk to your MP, you talk to your MP collectively. You let him know that look, we're dissatisfied with your with the way your the services that you're providing mm-hmm. are not providing, mm-hmm. and therefore we are willing, we are willing to vote for somebody else, mm-hmm. right? Now that's just one one step. Then we have to step up. Okay, we need to get leaders in positions of authority because we don't have leaders in positions of authority. We need, we need a police commissioner who is free from from the taint of being associated with politicians. Right? Mm-hmm. You, do you think for a moment that, that Commissioner Anderson would, in light of everything that's going on, conduct an investigation against any politician? No! So where does no, that where does that leave us with where does that leave us with uh, SSL? And I'm not just talking Commissioner Anderson now because SSL is on the table. They say they have called in the FBI. From what you know, is the FBI investigating it? Well, uh, I don't know for a fact, but I can tell you is that the FBI would have an interest in it. As far as investigating it, I'm not sure because here's why: they will have to be invited in by host country government, meaning Jamaica. However, if, if they determine that American citizens were involved in this. Were, were, were injured financially as a result of what took place, or and or that the ill-gotten gains, the fraudulent monies, touched the the um, Swiss system, the, the American banking system, then the FBI would have jurisdiction because one of the things that Uncle Sam hates is for you to use his banking system to facilitate fraud um, or criminal activity mm-hmm. uh, or to hide funds. Mm-hmm. Don't like that because mm-hmm. they have to protect the integrity of the, of the banking system. So they will go after them for that. And there's a group in Miami, and there's a group in D.C., and there's a group in New York who, I mean, at the drop of a hat, they would readily investigate it. So mm-hmm. they said they have invited the FBI in to look at it. Well, let me tell them this. If they did, and if the FBI is on the ground, and by the way, there's an FBI agent in Jamaica on a daily basis. There's somebody assigned to the embassy. Mm-hmm. The embassy is run out of... But that person answers to the person in the Dominican Republic, but mm-hmm. there's a person there every day. Mm-hmm. But let me say this. The, the Financial uh, Investigative Division and the Fraud Unit and Minister, Minister uh, Nigel Clark and the others, they will rule the day they ask the FBI to come in. If they think that the FBI is going to come in and they're going to direct, they, meaning Jamaica, will direct the investigation. The FBI, they're trained as trained investigators, they're going to follow leads to their logical conclusion. And what does that mean? To the very end. If they're te- tentacles, they're going to follow those tentacles. And it could mean in the end that some of these same people calling for the FBI investigation will become FBI subjects. So then, 
I know that the, the question uh, has been raised here uh, last night. I had a caller saying to me the FBI um, is not investigating now that even though that announcement was made, he doesn't think that the FBI is in. Um, you have uh, experience looking on, and I hear you say they will rule the day. They should know this also. Two questions. Are they here and will they come in? I mean, are they here? Are, have they come in already to do this? And if not, will they come in for this? I, I, I don't know for a fact if they're there. But listen, if they're there, it's easy. Jamaica is a small country, and most FBI agents don't look like me and you, right? Mm -hmm. And they're going to be asking questions. So people know yes. that they're there. Okay. Uh, so, so, so that one, they will know in a heartbeat. And, and the idea that they're sending 40 people, uh, that's nonsense. They're not sending 40 people to do this. The second point is that the FBI agents who are assigned there, even though that person may not be investigating, they're collecting. So what's happening is that that information, everything that you see going on, that's being reported to Washington. And at some point, a decision will be made that, hey, do we come, if we have been contacted, we meaning the FBI, we have been contacted by the Jamaican government to assist in a meaningful way, then maybe we should just do our own investigation mm -hmm. and, and let it just follow where they may. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. It, it, and then also, how do you invite, I know it's interesting, how do you invite the FBI to come in and you don't have terms of reference? You don't say who's going to lead the investigation, whether it will be led by the FBI, led by the Jamaica uh, Constabulary Force, or it will be a joint investigation. You will talk about, okay, uh, what about uh, 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 um, the, the, the chain of custody for evidence? How are we going to pass evidence will we, uh, to ensure that the, the chain is not broken? How do you invest? How do you uh, interview uh, Jamaican citizens? Mm -hmm. Will Jamaican government bring them in so in front of the FBI, or will they allow the FBI to go talk to them, or will they say, as I've seen in some countries, no, 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 you will not talk to our citizens. If you have questions, you give them to us. We will do the interview and we will provide mm -hmm. you with the results. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are lots and lots of things to, to uh, as far as. Uh, well, 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 what has happened on the island is that the questions have stopped and now we're talking about the Road Traffic Act. Ah, another deflection. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another deflection. And, and, and they're talking about, they're talking, and, and look how silly this is. Right? They have so many serious problems that, they're gonna deal with, that they have to deal with. And then when you look at the stats, if they're, if they're claiming that they're doing, they're doing um, uh, investigations based on data, if you look at the data, I believe it's three percent of the fatalities over the past six years involve children under the age of fourteen. I believe mm -hmm. three percent over the past six years, and then you're going to make this your priority that that they must have child uh, uh, see and but, but you going, preparation for weight. But going off, going off your size, going off it, going off what you said earlier. Um, there, there's always this deflection, there's always this distraction, and SSL is, I think, the, tra the Road Traffic Act and that, that, that one clause in it about the, the, um, the car seats for children and the point you're raising, all of that might have been deliberate on the part of government to get people riled up about this so that will take our minds and our attention off SSL, of Ian Fleming, and off the, the big ganja find and possibly off the airplane that you raised again here. There are so many things that are unsolved and not dealt with that we just move from one to one to the other to the other and there are no answers. So, so this is another right. deflection. Your, your, your thoughts on that? Yeah, it, it is a deflection. Deflection, deflection, a big D. Um, and yes. all the other letters capitalized as well. I'm giving you a minute. Um, they shouldn't do. I'm giving you a minute to, to wrap. Yeah. Yes. What they shouldn't do is they, they shouldn't allow, they shouldn't, they shouldn't allow somebody to create a problem and then resolve the problem and then you praise them. And by the way, when somebody does what they're supposed, what they're paid to do, like some of the ministers, you shouldn't, you shouldn't applaud them. You shouldn't, you shouldn't, you know, we really don't accolade on them because they're getting paid what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the only reason why we're doing that now is because the, the others are so terrible. Mm -hmm. that the ones who seem to be doing okay, we, 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 we rain accolades on them as if they're God sent. Mm -hmm. But they're not. They're not. And they're doing exactly what they're being paid to do. You don't praise people for doing what they're being paid to do. This <laughs> is the, this And is this is <laughs> must stop doing it, people. Wake up. Don't be deflected by the next story. Keep keep focused on the stories. All of them. Keep focused on them and hold the government accountable. And not just this government, but any government in the future, you hold them accountable. We, we're all about 
people and policies. We're not about party and politics. Thank you so much, my brother, attorney at law, former FBI agent. We're going to call you back and we're going to continue this conversation. It is critical. I'm at, I'm at that service, Thank I'm you at so much. Service. Thank you so much. Wilfred Rantigan there, attorney at law, former FBI agent. You heard him. Now let us think on these things. Let us have a sit down. Let us have a sit down and talk about what we just heard. All right? For Muta Baruka, Muta Baruka is off to Norway where he's attending the International Literary Conference, one of the few who have been asked to address that conference. I think he's looking at um, art or, or art and creativity as, uh, or rage as art and creativity, I, I think. I hope I don't have it wrong. But, but Muta is doing phenomenal work and he continues to do that. Sometimes he has to travel for that. And so he's in Norway today attending the International Literary Conference, representing Jamaica and the region. The informative information presented in this video is motivational and is positively aimed at inspiring, educating and entertaining the viewers with the cutting edge of critical reasoning. If you enjoy the contents on the Black Radar YouTube channel, please consider subscribing to show your support.